Hello, dear Piano Excellence for Life students. Uh, today we are starting on the new topic and we're going to talk about public performance and everything that comes with it. So whether or not you are planning to perform uh, for a large audience or maybe for just a group of family um, and friends or even for one person, you might experience a little bit of anxiety and something that all musicians commonly know as symptoms of stage fright. And I just want to mention that this is quite a challenging topic to discuss because we are dealing here with um, human psychology. And since all of us um, are wired differently, we try to talk about this topic in very general terms. But first things first, today we're going to start um, our conversation by talking about a little part of our brain that is responsible for experiencing stage fright and anxiety. It's called amygdala. It looks like a little um, almond shape area and you can see that it's very very tiny it's tiny but mighty so every time we walk on stage or maybe we just prepare to play for a little small group of people uh, we sometimes experience a bouquet of these feelings which are not very pretty um, you know some people experience butterflies in their stomach some people have you know foggy brain or shaky hands or they start sweating experience severe sweats. Um, there are many, many different kinds of symptoms. Um, and it simply means that amygdala, this little part, part of your brain, is being activated. What we want to understand about amygdala is that it is literally the oldest part of our brain. And we inherited this part from the prehistoric times. And even though we feel like the fear is something that is uh, rather negative, but for the prehistoric people, their fear would keep them alive, whether or not they were afraid of an animal or to get into the trap of some sort. So simply amygdala was helping them to, uh, to live their life on a daily basis and not to die at any moment. And the sad news are that in the 21st century, our amygdala is operating pretty much the same way whenever we're facing a, a stressful situation. Even though our life is a lot safer and more predictable, and even if we play in public and play on stage, nothing bad is really going to happen. And so when we are on stage or about to do something that is our comfort zone, our brain simply wants to protect us, right? And it wants to react with either um, running away from the danger or freezing or fighting, which is not very helpful when it comes to music. And imagine yourself, for example, being part of the choir, for example, right? You're part of the big group, everybody's singing. You're probably not going to experience stage fright at all. But if you're alone by yourself and a lot of people are watching, so our amygdala, our brain literally think that, you know, you're separated from the rest of the tribe and all these eyes are watching you. And in the prehistoric times, the separation of the tribe simply means that you are not going to be able to survive on your own so that means you're dead so really it uh, sort of engages that fear of death you know when you're alone and all these eyes are watching and the good news are that in the 21st century we know that we can absolutely rewire our brain even though this is not one step process it might take months or even years of uh, deliberate practice of rewiring your brain especially if you are someone who um, needs to come on stage, right? It's part of your work, a part of your occupation, whether you're performing <clears throat> or you are public speaking of some sort. So it is possible to rewire your brain and to make this experience uh, a lot more positive and manageable. And there's definitely a lot of uh, literature that was recently written about uh, rewiring your brain. One of the books that I highly recommend, uh, How to Rewire Your Anxious Brain, that I recently read, it's quite fantastic and quite optimistic too. So if you have a chance, please uh, take a look at it. Let's just talk about a few things that we can do in order to revive our brain. And we're going to continue this conversation in our next lectures. So, so what means reviving? Reviving means that you are creating a better experience or you're preparing yourself uh, to have a better experience on stage. And there are definitely some steps that you can do in order to, to do so. Number one, and maybe the most effective language that amygdala understands, 
is deep breathing. There are a lot of um, different kinds of technique of, uh, of breathing, of deep breathing, and um, you can research this on your own. But uh, simply what it means that we send our brain a signal that I am breathing, I'm breathing deeply, that means I'm comfortable, I'm alive, and the situation, I can manage it, right? And there's really no need for amygdala to overreact. So that would be a really good exercise for us um, in, before we go on stage, right? Or before you uh, play for somebody, is to take a very deep and very long breath. And in fact, breathing is something that we want to learn to incorporate not only for the stage performance. I mean, stage and just about we start playing, but it should uh, be incorporated also uh, during your practice. So start paying, at least paying attention, right, already. Every single time you sit down at the piano, what is happening to my breath? Most of us, uh, majority of us, just simply hold our breath. And but if you hold your breath, the brain thinks that you are dead, right? You're not breathing anymore. And obviously, the response um, that it sends is stress, anxiety, right? A panic, right? What is happening? So even when you just practice, even if you're never going to perform this piece for, you know, audience of 100 or even 10 people, simply noticing your breathing is a very good idea and very good investment. Another thing that could be helpful is muscle relaxation is to make sure that all your body is quite relaxed this is a topic of our next lecture uh, but i just want to briefly briefly say that when we practice and when we on stage try to also have a habit of scanning your body and just truly understand uh, understanding and hearing your body um, in case of you have any tension for example, the tension could be in your stomach again, the tension could be in your shoulders, all of us suffer from this. Tension could be in even in your, all uh, different parts of your legs. So try to make sure that your body is more or less relaxed. That will also be a great signal to amygdala that really nothing bad is happening. And another great tool for rewiring your brain would be the positive association with the experience. For example, you can create a positive ritual for yourself whether um, it is happening after the performance or right before the performance for example you can have a nice tea and cakes with friends right as a result um, as a celebration of your performance you can also reward yourself with a little gift or whatever you, you decide to reward yourself with um, you can start your day uh, with something that's unusual and extra delightful to you so the more positive experience that you will incorporate on the day of the performance for example the better it will serve you long term because then when you remember and look back at the day of your performance uh, in public you will also start remembering or your brain will remember those little um, nice things that you had or you experienced along with your performance and this will help you to create sort of a positive um, attitude toward you know, playing in public in general and those little advices not only working for musicians, they are working for anyone and in any situation uh, when we are doing something that's out of comfort zone, whether it's performance or public speaking or doing something that you haven't done um, before. So I hope you will try it and I hope you will enjoy it so we can all have a fearless and um, exciting life that we are not afraid of. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.